welcome to the show. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Welcome back, Go fans, to another episode of Goat Radio. I'm the big man, and I am a massive fan of our next guest. Pro hockey player who has another career in another direction. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pumped to welcome rising country music star Mark Ledlin, a.k.a. Leds. <laughs> What's up, Milos? Thanks for having me. What's up, buddy? I love your style, man. You look, you're looking good with that no tooth. You're like a oh. beauty. It's, uh, you know, it's, I always say like, I'm always keeping, always keeping local dentistry in check. Like I'm always keeping <laughs> them afloat. Awesome, bro. All right, man. You're making a lot of noise in the music scene. We're going to get into it, but first things first, the gold fans know the drill. They got to say, I got to say what I'm wearing. Okay. Let's hear it. So I, I got, I got a lot of requests this month to wear this Jersey, the Ilya Kovalchuk old school Atlanta Thrasher's Jersey shitty team, but wicked jersey talk All about right. a throwback and a talk about a player for sure man and uh wicked color combo I, I don't know what kind of blue this is but it's it's unreal what what player did you like growing up okay so hot topic i loved you know i grew up with ovechkin coming in the league i grew up yeah. with crosby coming into the league man my guy is alexander Semin. oh he might have had we talk about this with with the hockey guys arguably one of the best snapshots there was in the game for sure it's too bad he just he couldn't get it done in the core with washington that sucks no, and it's we always we always poke fun because he was one of those guys like european player had the back tuck but he was possibly one of the longest sticks and would just wire the puck yeah awesome yeah i remember him i think he's still playing too or yeah he's He's in Russia. Yeah, yeah. Bank in Russia now. Awesome. Okay, speaking of hockey, I want to touch on your hockey days right now. You you started playing pro at a young age, 17, yes, 17. I, be, I believe. And uh, like what led you to get out of the lower mainland right away and, and head to the German land? I know your dad was a wicked hockey player himself. What led you to take off from uh, the lower mainland and, and go play some pro right away? So there was kind of two deciding factors of kind of what I wanted to do. So in, in my household, you know, things have changed nowadays. Like hockey's become a full 12 month sport. Yeah. And uh, in my household, I was never allowed to play 12 months of one sport. That was, that was the rule. Um, just because at a young age, I know a lot of kids would get burnt out just by doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so I was a big baseball guy. I always played baseball in the off season and like growing up in, like minor hockey, we didn't have like training camp, whatever your tryouts. The first time I would touch the ice was back at tryouts. And so it finally got to the point where, you know, I was getting old enough and my dad said, you know what, like you have a German passport, you're from Germany, go over there for a year and see how you like it. Um, so I went over there at 15, was doing online school at the time and just fell in love, fell in love with where I was from. And so kind of made the decision to come back, graduate, and then immediately go back and play junior. And, you know, I kind of took a different route where over in Europe, you have the ability to play, play pro at pretty much any age. And, um, you know, I got an opportunity to go to Berlin, which was a great city, but I was also getting paid to play junior hockey, which for me, it was a, it was a thing where, you know, when I'm at a certain age, I don't want to be, I don't want to be living off my parents' time. I don't want to be dependent on them. Obviously, to a certain extent, like I was still a kid at the time. 
but having the ability, even if it was a small amount of money, to have my own income coming in from junior hockey and getting to practice with a pro team every day and getting to play games, it was a no-brainer. Um, just because, you know, you're a product of your environment, and if you're only playing with junior guys, you're going to stay at that junior level. But if you're 17 and you're playing, you're practicing with pro guys, it's going to take your game to the next level. Absolutely. And it's pretty nuts. You're only 25 and you've been, you're like a grizzled vet. In, in the, in the... It's, it's crazy, man. Like I got to wear, I got to wear the C last year for the first yeah. time in my career. And um, it was a little bit of a weird feeling. Like I had guys who had played world championships. I had guys who had played hundreds, hundreds of pro games. And I kind of got like the, the honor showed on me where, you know, letting you like, you're going to lead this team. And, you know, looking back at it, I did start playing pro at 17. And so like to have 300 games before I even turned 25 was a pretty cool thing. That's it's, it's impressive, man. So I got, I wonder, man, in your years in Germany, where did the love for music come? When were you like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to pick up a guitar and start making, singing some music. So that was a funny story. I was with my a good buddy of mine and, um, you know, everything, everything comes with consequences. And my consequence was like being over in Germany when I was, when I was such a young age, I, um, I kind of feel like I missed out on my, on my teenage year experience. Yeah. And so I got into like a little bit of a lull and yeah. was, was playing video games, was playing hockey full time. Like, felt like I was missing out a bit and I felt like I needed something just to kind of take my mind away from the game, take my mind away from my personal life. And I'll remember it to the day, like I was with a good buddy of mine and we're at a, a little grocery store called Lidl. And there was this kid's six string nylon guitar for 40 bucks. And I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to grab this guitar. I'm going to teach myself. My buddy looks at me and goes, man, I give you maybe four days before you, before you get up and quit. Yeah. And you what like day one day one it was tough like my fingers hurt everything sucked but then day four came day eight you know two months in and I just fell in love with music and I fell in love with playing and I always say to the guys like it's either like you can have a bad day at the rink you can have a bad day at work but there's nothing better than going home and just leaving it at your front door picking up a guitar and just letting your emotional side come out of it and that's like that's a big thing for me is like I want I want people to understand like the stigma between arts and athletics, there shouldn't be one. And yeah. like, that's my biggest goal is that if I can, if I can be a role model for one kid in the lower mainland or one kid anywhere to be like, ah, I really like music. I just, I'm worried about what the guys in the room are going to say. Don't even second guess it because my biggest fans are the guys in the room. Oh, I was just going to ask, do they ever tell you to play uh, in the dress room oh. at all? <laughs> all the time, all that's... the time, man. And like, it was, it's one of those things where like when I was on, when I appeared on the voice, the singing show, yeah. the entire hockey community backed me. It felt like all of Germany was watching. Wow. Yeah. I saw some clips of you and I was surprised you speak wicked German, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, is that when you would do it, when you did the voice, is that where you're like, Hey, I, I got some talent here. Maybe I can make some moves. Yeah, it was. It was more, it wasn't the TV show itself. It was the audition process. Yeah. So what they do is basically they put you in a big room of like 75 people and they get you to sing a song a cappella. So that means like no guitar, no music, just, just vocal. And uh, I went up there and sung a country song in Germany and they're like, that was great. Can you sing some pop music? Cause country is not entirely huge over in Germany. Mm -hmm. And so I sang so many love by Louis Capaldi and they're like, awesome. Great. And I was the third person to go. So 72 more people had to go before they made the, the announcement. And that was only the first round of auditions. And like, they finally came up and I said, okay, thank you. Like only two of you guys are going to be moving on and like Mark and so-and-so. And I was like, okay, like maybe, maybe we can get through the end of this day. And you know what? Nine hours later in an audition studio, like I made it through all the rounds and then, uh, and then COVID hit. And yeah. I, I kind of, I sent them a text and I said, Hey, listen, like, all of this is a little uncertain and up in the air. Like I got to be home with my family. Like I appreciate you guys giving me the time. Um, I can't be here for the in-person auditions. And they said, no man, like we want you, we want you on the show. We're going to do all the interview process on zoom and on FaceTime. And so they were great. They made everything work for me. And then um, another month of like interviews and processes. And like, I got the announcement that I finally made the show. And I went, I kind of took back, I took a step back and I was like, maybe this is like, there was 25,000 people that auditioned for that, that season. 
Yeah, and wow. like I was, one of the, I was one of the 200 to make it. And so I kind of looked at myself and I was like, I think I got this. Like, I think I, I have an opportunity to do some music here. And you know what? Like when, when my audition came and no one turned, it was like, it wasn't a defeated feeling. It was the fact that I even made the show as a pro athlete, not just a musician, because it was, it was my side hustle. And then when I got to go back on the comeback stage and I got to sing Fast Car, which is like the first song I ever learned. At that time, it was a full circle moment for me. And then after that, after that um, moment, I was like, I think I, I really think I want to dive deeper into the music side of it. That's pretty amazing. And and you continue to grind. And now exciting time for you, man. You just came out with your EP. And honestly, I'm not just saying this, man. I absolutely love your music. Appreciate it. Thank you. You could really tell how you you put your your heart into the this, these songs, and you seem to be telling a story. Uh, the songs are kind of you know, drink about me, Montana, um, someone else's ring. It's kind of they're kind of correlated in a way. Is that right? Hundred percent. Everything, especially when you're coming out with a project like singles. Singles are a little bit easier to get away with when you're not fully telling a story. But I knew I knew when I dropped Drink About Me that I wanted to have it on the record. And I knew every song after that, people were going to judge and kind of dissect. And, you know, like with the success I had with Drink About Me, I knew I'd have to put something in that where people would go, okay, like this guy is telling a real story. And like, you know, I always tell people I was good at PE, I was good at woodshop, and I was really good at English class. That was the, the three subjects in school I was really good at. And, you know, I got, like anything, it's repetition, like your brain's a muscle. And, you know, the first, the first hundred songs I wrote, I'll never play for anybody just because they're, they're not worth listening to. But if I didn't write those hundred songs, I never would have stumbled upon drink about me. I never would have wrote Montana. I never would have met the people that I'm working with now. And it's, it's a trained skill of being able to kind of sit down and dissect your own life and putting into a song and like public speaking for some people is a super tough skill to, to kind of learn. And for me, I could always talk to people. Like my dad says, I, I could sell a house to a house. Yeah. I talk to a brick wall and make it laugh. Like that was always the thing. And so when I put the record together, I wanted to make sure that every kind of story told, told the story of a different song. And so like someone else's ring still kind of features drink about me and Montana kind of goes hand in hand with, with like kind of losing that person or like losing yourself and realizing that you're better off alone. And then, um, and then Cowboys were sneakers too. That's, that's a fun one. That's the title track. Yeah. Because I got to have a little bit more, more rock with that a little more hardy and that one was at boots and hearts like i saw a lot of costumes um of cowboy hats jean jackets boots but i knew for a fact a lot of these guys couldn't change their girlfriend's oil <laughs> for sure that's awesome man and honestly it's it's really resonating with your fans it's uh and uh we're pumped for you man i'm so pumped for you and uh the last couple of months, you've had some wicked shows. Sunfest just took place. I'm sure it was one of the highlights being on stage there. How's the experience there? It was a it was a really surreal moment because that was the first time I'd ever played a show in my hometown, kind of thing. And yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just like oh like he's he's an opening act, or whatever. Like I was I was the secondary support for Laney Wilson, who's having a hell of a career right now. And uh, I got to open up for Cameron Marlowe. And when I went out there and. I saw 3000 people that came to watch me play. It was, it was a surreal moment because yeah, like you, I've played in front of tens of thousands of people in hockey in my career, but with hockey, there's 22 guys you can rely on to have a good game in music. You go up there, you're the guy you have to perform. You got to put on a show. And I, I'll ne never forget this. I said to my producer and he's also my band, Dan, I said, Hey, is there, is there anybody out there? He goes, enough to remember enough to be humbled kind of thing and i went out there and there's there's 2500 people in the pit and i'm like these people came to watch me play this is crazy that's awesome D did your time and you know you played in front of some wicked crowds in europe i bet uh playing hockey you know the the fans in europe are a different uh breed man did, yeah. did that did those experiences kind of help you out with dealing with that pressure of being on stage you know what like i i say to people the first time, the first moment I really had of where I was playing in front of a large amount of people, I was 18 at the time when we were playing, um, I was playing in Berlin for the DEL team. We were playing against a team called Grizzly Wolfsburg. And I remember my first shift in my first ever pro game, 
I get the nod to go. I hop the bench. But as I hopped the bench, I threw my stick into the middle of the ice. And I was like, oh, no. Like, now I'm gone on the ice. I have no stick. Like, this is a bad luck. <laughs> and in singing, you kind of have those moments where, like, that moment where I threw my stick into the middle of the ice, that was the, the icebreaker. Like, I was fine after that. In hawk in music, you get up there and you sing the first line of the song and you're right into the moment. You're up there for an hour, good, bad, be ugly. You're up there for the next hour putting a show on for these people. And But, like, being in front of crowds, it's never really made me nervous just because I'd done it from seven – when I was 17, I've had years to practice, like, being in front of a crowd – so when I went out there and I knew the songs like the back of my hand because they're my songs, I, I felt right at home. Awesome. And you know what? Goat Radio is going to be in attendance September 10th, man. We are jacked up. How pumped are you? You're going to be playing at what people say is the, you know, the goat bar in Vancouver for decades. How'd this gig get lined up and how pumped are you? So I recently, um, I recently signed a management deal with Dallas Smith's agency. Um, for those who don't know who Dallas Smith is, he's arguably one of the biggest country stars to come out of Canada. And uh, lo and behold, my manager, Billy, used to work at the Roxy. And so oh. she kind of made it happen where she knows all the guys. She said, do you want to play your hometown show at the Roxy? And I said, honestly, as a hockey player, there's no place I'd rather be on a Sunday than the Roxy. And I'm telling you people here, like, September 10th, we were going to put on a show. We got my good buddy, Curtis Hagen, open up for me. I just got to announce that. And the best thing is, is that Curtis was a hockey guy too. And like, you know what? Some people get to the junior level and they just kind of want to find a regular job. And he's kind of doing the same thing, man. Like he was, a, he was a really good hockey player growing up, but now he's got a full-time business of his own. But now he's also pursuing this music stuff. And all of these guys are a, a little bit older than me. But I feel, I feel honored to give them an opportunity to come play in front of people, come play in their hometown and try to give back to the sense of like, you know what, I'm not just going to ask some, some already established artist to come open up for me. I want to give a guy that I know deserves it. And the fact that he was a hockey guy makes me feel a little bit more honored as well. Man, we can't wait. How can the Gold fans grab some tickets, man? I, I got mine through your link. Uh, you're big yep. on socials. So how can they... Uh... Get a hand on some tickets. So if you're looking to grab some tickets, uh, just on my Instagram, the handle is uh, at mledlin, L-E-D-L-I-N. And uh, you can also pick them up at the door on the night of the Roxy. They're going to be a little bit a little bit more expensive, but, you know, like tickets are 15 bucks. And I always say, like, the, the average cost of a cocktail is 15 bucks. And so, you know what, why not come down to the Roxy on a Sunday and support local? Uh, for sure. Are you going to have some merch there or anything? Absolutely. I'm going to have some hats for the guys. I'm going to have t-shirts for everybody. It's going to be, it's going to be a good time. Awesome, man. We can't wait. And mention you're on country Canada's music playlist on Apple. Yes, sir. Man. How did you learn that you were, uh, your face was on that cover? <laughs> so it was, it's been, it's been a, like a kind of a whirlwind the last like few months. Yeah. Um, especially when I released this EP, like, Shout out to my team. Shout out to Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon. Like the EP has done over six hundred thousand streams in a little over four weeks, which for an independent artist you couldn't ask for more. It means people are listening to the music, and given the opportunity, like if you make a little bit of noise and you ruffle the right feathers, um, people will reach out. And I remember when this is actually the second time I've had um, a playlist cover for Apple Music, and so he he texts me again and he goes, hey, like do you want to be? I, I, I love cowboys. Like I want to put your face on the cover. And so we learned about it a little bit further on or earlier on, but then it's the same giddy feeling every time you wake up on a Friday, a new music Friday and you get to see that fucking mug yeah. just on, <laughs> just on a big playlist. Man, it's, it's incredible, man. Good for you. Um, so what's your plan with hockey? I was going to ask you, have you totally hung, hung your pro skates up, but are, uh, what's your plan with that? So, you know what, like, I felt, I felt like if I, if I went out last year, it wasn't the real farewell tour. And so I uh, signed a contract, going to go back for one more year. But then after that, it's going to be full fledged into music. So I'm kind of going into it. You know, it's, it's a bittersweet taste because if anyone's ever, you know, left school, left their hometown, left anything they really enjoyed you know how hard it is because at the end of the day, that last game, that last period or that last second, like you're just 
the influx of emotion is going to take over you. And I said, you know what? Like, I want to do it one more time. I talked with my team about it and she gave me the okay to go back. So we're going to, we're going to give it one more kick of the can and then it's going to be full fledged in the music. Awesome. So are you heading out pretty quick here? Are you going back to Rostock? Uh, no, I'm not going back to Ross. There's a team called Bayreuth in the German third league as well in the South. Um, I leave October 14th. The team was really good at saying, hey, listen, we know you got shows lined up. My last show is October 12th at the Commodore Ballroom, another hockey event. Oh, perfect. Uh, that's going to be the, the Canucks Foundation tonight. So that's Rick Hansen, who uh, unfortunately got um, paralyzed in a car accident from the waist down. Yeah. And um, so we're going to be playing the Commodore Ballroom with a, with a pretty good lineup as well. Wicked, man. Good to see. One more question before we head to go rapid fire. Yeah. In the music scene, man, what's your ultimate goal here? You know, I, I thought, I thought going into it that I wanted to be just a musician. I just wanted to sing songs, but I really found a taste for writing music. And my goal at the end of it is to be a musician. And what that entails is a difference between being an artist and a musician. An artist is somebody who goes up there and performs, is great on stage. They sing songs. A musician is where you can, you can sit down with a guitar around a campfire and draw people in with just a six string in your voice and a story. And my, my biggest goal is to obviously have a career as an artist, but at the same time, write music for other people, just because I love, I love dissecting stories. I love hearing about people's stories, lives. And if somebody can tell me one thing and I can turn it into a song, I feel like that goes a lot more than just words. It kind of goes hand in hand with actions speak louder than words. And if I can take somebody's bad day and turn it into a great song and let them resonate with it, I feel like I've done my job as an artist. Amazing, man. You speak like a real leader in the dressing room, man, for sure. I try to, man. Like, you know, if, if I can, you know, words, words are cheap. Talk is cheap. And my biggest thing is that like, if, if I'm not going to do it, why would they follow me if I'm just going to say it? And if that goes and like, I'm, I'm not afraid to drop the mitts for, for a younger guy as well, or any teammate, but it's, it's being, it's almost being that big brother role. In the sense of like, no matter if it's with your buddies at a bar, if it's not on the ice, it's on stage. Like if, if you know me and you're part of my crew, it's like family, man. I got your back no matter what, even if, man, if, if, if it, the guy's six foot five and I know I'm going to lose, like, well, at least we got beat up together kind of thing. Amazing. Fucking rights, brother. I love it. Go rapid fire, man. You're going to give me your answer. You can expand if you want to, or, or you could say next question. Okay. Let's go. Alexander Ovechkin or Sidney Crosby? Ovechkin, I like goals. Leon Dreisaitl or Austin Matthews? Leon Dreisaitl. LeBron James or Steph Curry? LeBron James. Okay, some German soccer players. Thomas Müller or Bastian Schweinsteiger? Bastian Schweinsteiger. Oh, nice. Novak Djokovic or Rafa Nadal? Nadal. GSP, so George St. Pierre, or or Khabib? Oh, GSP, he paved the way. Pioneer. John Cena or Roman Reigns? If John you're wrestling. Cena, you can't see me. Yeah, Roman Reigns, though, the tribal chief. We're big uh, wrestling fans here, bro. <laughs> Happy Gilmore or Mighty Ducks? I th it's got to be Happy Gilmore. Yeah. It has to be Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Food category. The schnitzel or the bratwurst? Oh. Honestly, man, tough question. But, like, it's got to be the German street meat, man. It's got to be the, the bratwurst. Ooh, with the sauerkraut or? Oh, yeah. Wicked. Okay, I don't want to throw you under the bus, but it, it was just a topic a few months ago, okay? Blondes or brunettes? Brunettes. Till I die. Nice. Okay. Overall best city. Munich or Berlin? Tough night crowd. Night I'm gonna break it down for you. Nightlife, Berlin and culture, scenery and simplicity, Munich. Nice. All right. Any underrated German cities? Um, so there's a town called Rotenburg Auf die Taube, and that's where uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was filmed. Oh, <laughs> it's one of the most, it's the most, um, photographed pic, uh, postcard in all of Europe. Oh, good to know. Yeah. I know you mentioned Semin, but who's your hockey idol growing up? Uh, my dad. 
Fred? Fred. Fred. Wicked. Look at I man, to, to, like I got I got Fred on the back of my phone. His oh, Fred, amazing. Hopper, oh yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Fuck. I heard I heard about him, man. He was a stud in uh the Dell in the German one. He, Complete he stud. He yeah. He <laughs> okay, who's the goat hockey player you played with or against? Um, goat hockey player I played with, uh, it's gotta be Matt Barzell. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. You know what? We actually had uh Carl Osner on the pod and yep. he mentioned he's like Barzell is probably one of the best players I played against. And you he, know what? Th- Any day of the week, like I'll take Matt. I will um throw him out under the bus here, but I could you know, we used to say like we might be the top two athletes coming out of out of, out of Coquitlam. Yeah. But um you put that guy on skates, he's got me beat. But <laughs> man, do we compete about everything else? Oh, beautiful. Favorite song on your EP? Uh, Montana. Carrie Underwood or Taylor Swift? Carrie Underwood, for sure. Ooh. Luke Bryan or Luke Combs? Luke Combs, no question. Ooh. Okay, if you could keep one, which would it be? Your flow, your mustache, or your no tooth? No tooth. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> are you the only singer or country guy coming out of german germany yeah i think i think i'm the all-time best pop country artist to come out of germany so far can writes the goat okay if you can duel with anyone on stage anybody who would it be uh it's got to be hardy it's got to be hardy um he's with big loud he's with my dream label and um He's arguably one of like the best performers I've ever seen. Awesome. All right, brother. You know what? I like to finish off. I always finish off the pod with a nice drink for your greatness. All right. Uh, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. I can I can meet you at the Roxy after your show and have a have a nice little drink with you. Oh, we'll have we'll have a few pints. For sure, brother. Okay. So I got a nice, it's most associated with the country, right? They got yeah. the whiskey, you got the Glenfiddich. Oh. All right, just cracked it. And then I got my Stein here. My German Stein. That's German. That's German. Okay, nice little stiffy here. Um, 9 a.m. shot. I love it. All right, brother, a little toast to you. You're an absolute rising star. You can really see how you put your heart and soul into your music, man. And it's showing, brother. And you're a real leader in hockey. This one's for you, brother. All the best. We can't wait to see you at the Roxy. Roxy Sunday. The Go Radio Boys. Check them out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Unreal, I man. It. I love it. Thank you, brother. I can't wait to catch up with you uh, after your show. Can't wait to hear you. Um, Go fans, don't forget to pick up your tickets. September 10th. Roxy Sunday. All right, brother. Thanks for joining me, man. You, you the man. Keep on grinding. All right, and good luck in this year in uh, in Germany. And uh, we'll keep following you. And let's do this again sometime. Milos, thank you so much. If you're not listening, listen to the Goat Radio. This is the greatest of all time, Luke. He said it. This is the greatest of all time podcast show, Goat Radio. We will see you next time for more Goat history. We'll see you later. Pros, switching the lanes, clearing my throat, turning it up, start a debate, it's time to go, wrestle with grace, fall in the snow, tie up the skates, never too late, it's gonna blow, in the garage, counting some dough, with the big man and he hosting the show, we going global so fast, never slow, who is the goat of our ghosts? Wow. G-O-A-T, whoa, uh, radio, best of all time, that's the ratio, Dino Tuna, welcome to the show, yeah, by the let them know, G-O-A-T, G-O-A-T, whoa, Yeah, better let them know. G O A T Y, G O A T Y.